ReleaseWire helps businesses connect with interested journalists and bloggers. Visit ReleaseWire.com slash political radar to save 25% off your first order. Admiral, radar shows that we have liberals approaching at 3 o'clock and libertarians at 9 o'clock and conservatives at 6 o'clock. They're coming from every angle, every viewpoint. Oh, it's Political Radar with your hosts, Rhonda and Elliot. Hey, all you political junkies, welcome to Political Radar, the best 30 minutes of unscripted, uncensored political 26. talk you will hear all day. 26. 26. <laughs> Episode 26. We have a lot to talk about, so that's why I had to cut you off. Thank you. Yeah. We have Alex Galt in our studio today. Thank you, Alex. Hello. For coming in. Happy to. And Alex's biggest fan. That's me. I still don't know why, but... I don't either. Yeah. So Alex, you ran for county board and um, how was that experience and what do you have to say about that and what's going on? Well, you know, I mean, the experience itself, you know, the experience of walking the neighborhoods and knocking on many, many, many doors and talking to lots of folks was, uh, you know, honestly, it was one of the most encouraging political experiences of my entire life. I mean, I don't think you can really understand that unless you've tried it, Um, but just... The idea that people are apathetic, the idea that people are just sitting on their couches and doing nothing, the idea that you know people just don't care is just absolutely not true. Um, you know, people do care, and it was just for me, it was just an incredibly enriching experience just to you know talk to people and see that. Um, so, I, you know, regardless of you know results, and obviously I didn't win that election, but um, if, to me it was um, an amazing experience, and um, I'm open to you know trying it again in two years. So you didn't you didn't win. You did really well, though. I mean, you really covered a lot of territory, and you did get a lot of support. You did well in that election. Oh, I, I felt really encouraged. You know, I, I did. Um, you know, I, I came about even in Alloway. And um, I was a little bit down in Bellevue, um, but um, you know, it, like all in all, I think I did pretty well against a um, an incumbent, and um, I was encouraged by the results. So who's who's representing that area right now? Well, <laughs> um, it's funny you should ask because it's it's not me, obviously, and it's not um, Tom Caters, the winner of that election. But now it's um, Paul Ballard. So um, Tom Caters, hmm, what happened there? So Tom Caters decided um, six weeks out. You know, I think I'm going to move. I'm not going to live here, and I I can't represent people anymore, right? Um, that's as far as I know. I mean, all I really know is that you know, five weeks after that election, um, he oh, it was five. It was I. I was first informed. Um, wow. I I first um discovered that um he was um considering resigning on May seventh, which was actually about like four and a half weeks after the election. Because the election was April fifth. Yeah. Hmm. Um. So, you know, I mean. And it, know, it, I, I don't know the circumstances. Us, it's taken that, us but. like six months to move. This this isn't the kind of thing <laughs> when you're a, when you're a Gen X. Yeah. Uh, when you're an adult, this isn't the kind of thing that just sneaks up on you. Oh, I'm I'm moving out of the district, and I had no idea. Yeah, you, you know that's the case, and um, I mean when, when looking at this whole you know um, situation, there, there are things that are in sharp focus, there are things that are fuzzy, and this is a fuzzy thing. <laughs> you know, I don't understand what happened, and for all I know, there are good reasons for what happened. Well, see, I think it's in sharp focus. I I I, I feel like not that there was necessarily collusion. I guess if that's what you're saying, the fuzzy part is. Yeah. But I mean, the 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 ethical thing to do would have been to announced to the public prior to the election, hey, I'm actually not going to be able to do the job. Like you don't take a job. Nobody, you don't accept a job and then quit a week later. Okay. So Patrick Moynihan is the person who actually decided or is the one that um, if something like this happens and he takes resumes and he goes through, has interviews, and then he basically puts his choice out there and then the county board either accepts it or not. Yeah, th- th- that's been the established process in this county for a while. Hey, did Patrick but... Moynihan have any idea that Tom Caters was move- moving away? Is there any way to find that out? Is there any, are there email correspondences that you could, you know, look into? Um, I mean, my understanding is that there, I mean, a, a lot of that is subject to public record. Um, mm-hmm. And how, how would a person go about asking for that? I'm I'm not actually sure about what the exact process would be, but I think we'll probably start with talking to um, someone at the county. You know, it's not something that I pursued. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it, at this point, I mean, I, I've. You know why? Because when they take the low road, you take the high. Road. <laughs> 
Well, you know, you know, again, this is a fuzzy focus kind of thing. I mean, I'd, I'd rather talk about things that are in sharp focus. And um, for me, that that is really the question of whether or not this is the most democratic way that we could be handling these situations, which seem to be pretty frequent at this point. And so is there a state statute? Have we decided if there's some sort of state statute that actually says this is how it happens? This is how it goes down if someone decides that they're not going to be there anymore for whatever reason, and then someone gets appointed, and I'm doing this air quotes, appointed, okay. right? Yeah. Is that a state statute? Um, it, it is, but it's not the full state statute. Um, and when I when I spoke to Patrick Moynihan, the way he presented the situation to me was that the reason he was going ahead with the with the appointment was because it would be too long to leave the district unrepresented until November, um, and, and and that's what he told me. Um, according to the state statute, however, um, the option exists to uh, make an appointment, which would end up being a temporary appointment. Um, so that the district is represented for a period of time until the the next election, which in so he just be conveniently forgot about that part. So th th um, that part is optional uh, according to the state statute, um, and that just hasn't been the practice in recent years. So it's not that he forgot; he chose not to actually take that option. Well, I mean, it appears that there are a number of choices that have been made. Um, and they could have had a special election in August, right? Th that's my understanding as well. I mean, um, we were first informed that. Um, the caters was resigning on May 7th. Um, the official announcement of that fact didn't come until July 21st. And uh, <laughs> so if they had moved with all possible speed, they could have um, put that election into the August 6th election. Has this or, happened before? Do you know this has happened before? Well, and, and that's the thing. Okay, um, this was um, Moynihan's sixth appointment um, since he's been... Um, the chairperson more recently. I think I believe that since 2012. And um, in all cases, it's been handled in this fashion. Um, so this isn't the first time. So know? who who decides that he's the big cheese? That he he's the one doing all this? Who who decides that? Um, I believe that's an, an internal vote of the Broughton County Board. Yeah, they could change yeah. the process, right? Right. Yeah. So so they're open to that. You know, I, mean, I, I think someone should make that motion. Well, I mean that that is why I'm here today is to ask the question, like. Does it serve the county, um, it, it, you know, in order to do it in this way? You know, would we be better served if we leave these decisions in the hands of the people who are going to be directly represented by these um, supervisors? Well, and six people is a pretty significant portion of the board. So you hit a point where yeah, it's a, it's a club. Well, I, I think that's that, that's. Um, I mean, that, that, that's a larger question, too, that I think we should be asked. Like, why are so many supervisors stepping away? And I, I know that people get jobs in different cities, and I know that, you know, things happen in people's lives and so forth. But um, I think it would have been, I think it would have, I hate this word, but I'm going to use it, behooved yeah. Tom Caters to actually come out publicly just to clear up the fuzzy yeah. and say, guess what? This is happening just so it doesn't look shady at all. Yeah, he could have actually been a part of that process as well, well but he I, doesn't have to be because I, I, it just gets handled the way it gets handled. I mean, I, I'm not just a, a, a former candidate for this district. I am a constituent, you know, in and this a district. property owner and, and a business owner. Correct. Yeah, and, and you know, when you run again, I hope you, I hope you make it a point to say, I have actual roots in this community. I ain't going anywhere. Yeah, no, I mean, sure. he owes that to his yeah. constituency, or he owes that to yeah. the people that voted for him. Not to just disappear, right? That, and, and that, be that, gone. That's where I was going with that. I, I think um, he really should have given a better explanation to his constituents on on why he did what he did, because at, at this point I don't know, and it, and that's why it's a fuzzy thing. And I think it should also be pointed out that okay, so the process to replace the person that decided five weeks into it that he's just not feeling it, whatever. We don't know. He didn't really say, right? We can create. All the the reasons why we want to, because we don't know. You get to do that when someone isn't clear and transparent, correct? So actually, okay. so this is what happens. So then somebody comes in and provides a resume. Somebody else comes in and provides a resume. There could be 10 people. We don't know about anyone else who wanted the job, except for the one person Patrick Moynihan decides is up. Well, not, not totally true. We, we do know um, some of the other names. And um, what I thought was interesting Does was the county board, be? are they able to vet them the same way, though? Um my understanding is that um, when he presents the um, 
the name to the board that he just presents that person's name and resume. Okay, so, and let's be real. Yeah, you know, we, 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 we do know some of the other people because they were, um, you know, because he mentioned them in a newspaper article. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things I thought was interesting about that was um, a Pat Williams, who formerly represented the, the district, um, was one of the people, you know, um, so I, and this is actually the second time um, that this has happened in District 15. So two people were, that were in an actual election right. were not yeah. chosen. And this has happened before. When Tom Caters was appointed, um, Carol Andrews, uh, who had also been elected to, um, to serve in that district, was also passed over at that time. Um, so, I, I, you know, I, the, the, the whole thing kind of rubs me wrong. And I, I, I realize that this, this can sound a little self-serving, and I apologize for that. I, I, I did pursue this appointment. The whole thing kind of gave me, I don't know, gastro, why, no, well, I mean, just like, I, 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 I like the whole thing kind of stunk well, to me Well, you the ran, yeah. you owed it to the people that did vote for you to follow through on that. Well, that, that, that was kind of, that, that, was, that was the argument I was making for myself. But really, like, ultimately, what I would have preferred would have been a special election. And I think that is the best way um, to make sure that the district is represented the way it wants to be You know, and we've said this in the past, when Alex and I agree, and especially if we have this one in, in, in with us. This one? It's, my it's, name is Rhonda. It's, Thank it's you. It's true. It's true. You this know, it's one. Like, I would like to have somebody sitting there who argues mm -hmm. the other way, because I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense to me. Well, I, I don't think there's an argument for it. I mean, other than you know, it's expedient. And well, anybody who voted in favor of this appointment... I, and I know they all listen. And if they don't, well, that speaks volumes also. They should be sitting in that chair. Well, you shouldn't invite. Well, I, 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 I just did. I just did. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, next issue, right? Sure. Do you have anything else to say about that? Not really. I just, I, I'd like to leave that as an open question. I hope yeah. that people will talk about this and think about this because I think that um, I, I just, just fundamentally in this country, whenever you have a choice between um, something that is more democratic and something that is less democratic, we should always go for the more. I'd be interested to know how many of the people that actually supported you contacted Patrick Moynihan. I would be interested to know about that. If, if he actually had feedback from those people. Um, if, if he did, he didn't really mention it to me. Um, but well, I'm sure he wouldn't. I think yeah. almost nobody knows that this is the sixth time that's happened. I didn't know that. And I feel yeah. like I'm relatively plugged in, but it just kind of slides right through and nobody makes a big deal out of it. Right. Well, I mean, it, I mean, Right now, um, there are either four or five um, supervisors who are serving uh, on the board who were um, appointed. Um, and, and many of those have now subsequently won election, but as we know, incumbency, incumbency. Gives, gives you a pretty big advantage. Especially in, especially in nonpartisan elections. Incumbency exactly. Incumbency gives you yeah. a huge boost. It, um, does. it does. And, um, and, and you know, what, what is that? That's like 20% of the board. You know, I... I I think that's a little math was hard. That's what I was going oh. for before. Huh. And so non <laughs> nonpartisan, that's the magic word right now, isn't it? Well, I don't know if it's the magic word right now, but you know, there was a discussion on, on Facebook about nonpartisan and what that means. Are these yeah. nonpartisan offices? Are these nonpartisan elections, nonpartisan ballots? What does nonpartisan mean? Well, I, I'd love to talk about that because I'm, mean, you know, okay. So here we are post election and we're, Post election fallout and so forth, and so I mean, for me, it's a moment of like reflection and contemplation, and I'm, I'm really just kind of I have a lot of questions, and and this this partisanship issue is one I've been kind of mulling over. I mean, even actually during during the campaign, I was thinking about it a little bit too. I mean, when when I was out there, you know, talking to um, you know potential constituents, they really wanted to know: Am I a Democrat or am I a Republican? I was asked that innumerable times. And um, I, I would, you know, first I would, I would say, well, you know, it's a, it's a nonpartisan office, so I'm not running as a Democrat, but I mean, I, I feel like I should tell you that I am, you know, a Democrat, you know, I mean, uh, but I, it, like, it felt like I would be obfusc obfuscating, that's a hard word for me, um, to not be transparent about that. Did you feel like, because I had the same questions on occasion running for city council, do you feel like you were asked that more from Democrats? I was, I feel like I was asked more from Democrats. They cared more than the Republicans did. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I think that's safe to say. Yeah. Um, it, it came up over and over and over again. Um, and, you know, to to not answer that question really strikes me as being 
you know, deceptive or not transparent. And if you're running for office, I think you really owe it to potential constituents. Well, that's a baseline, right? It, so they have a certain idea yeah, of what well, that I, means. And then it's, sure. a discussion, it's a starting point. And then you can say, yeah. however, I differ from Hillary Clinton in this way. Or, right. I mean, it's, it's not going to answer every question about every issue that for what you stand for. You know what? Whatever. I mean, in this day and age, people, if, you're, if you are driven enough to run for office politically on the local level, you're probably a political person. You've probably posted a few things on Twitter and Facebook about your politics. So I'm assuming yeah. if people really want to know that, it's not like it's a big, dirty secret. It's not that hard to find. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, a lot of my um, support came from people involved with the political uh, political parties, and you know, and, and this, the the irony about this is, I feel like I'm arguing in favor of having them be partisan elections almost because I feel like there are some some pros and cons that get washed out that way. But um, I think that a local election, if I were running, I wouldn't want to pick either of these parties. To me, they're they're both terrible. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to take either either side on that. Uh, so it, it helps people like me who can say, I don't have any part in any of that. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that, I think that's another like really valid issue is that, um, you know, like how do we build valid and powerful and realistic third parties in this country? and Or, or first and second parties. Because <laughs> I feel like they're falling apart at the seams. <laughs> Well, well, sure, you know, but I mean, like, what if there were Green Party candidates for, you know, Green Bay City What if there weren't party candidates? We just had people that ran for office. Well, that's the that's the idea, right? But then the objection is, then are you are you supposed to? Is it is it cool to disclose that? Is it cool to discuss political issues? Are you only supposed to be focused on on the sheets of paper in front of you at City Council? Mm -hmm. Well, how many people do you hear you hear them literally say, "I don't vote for the party; I vote for the the candidate." I don't actually believe that. I think it, a lot of people it, say that. Yeah, I, I, th I think that's, um, it sounds nice coming out of your mouth. I guarantee I will not be voting for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We are going to take a quick moment to thank our sponsor. ReleaseWire is a powerful media engagement service connecting businesses to interested journalists and bloggers. ReleaseWire is an effective and affordable way to get the word out about your business. As a fan of Political Radar, we have a special offer for you. Distribute your first on-demand press release with ReleaseWire and save 25%. Visit releasewire.com slash politicalradar to learn more. ReleaseWire, from release to results. So I don't know. So so going in, so are we going into some national politics with this? Is that what we're going to right now? We have about seven minutes left. Well, I mean, we, we, are, we do find ourselves in the middle of the Democratic National Convention and so la well, last week was the Republican convention that that all wrapped up. What do you think about that? Did um, you pay attention I'm, to any of it? Well, I'm I'm surprised that we continued to be able to. I, I was amazed to be able to drive to work today. You know, or um, you know, like after that um, Trump speech last night, you'd think that you know I would have been you know I don't know like carjacked on the way or something. So do we know because they were going to vote at the convention level on the conversion therapy item? Do we know where that went? I, I don't. I didn't know that that was up like right now. That's what I was told was they were uh, going to be voting on that at the convention. Do you mean the Democratic convention? No, I'm Demo talking about the uh, Republicans. The, Republican, the, the, yeah. the conversion therapy on their platform to be voted on. It went through a committee. It got approved from a committee and then it went to be on the platform to be voted on. Yeah. If you don't know what she's talking about, like it, it's it's the craziest thing. So they're so anti-gay. Yeah. They want to be able to have their children if they suspect go and have electroshock therapy to ungay them. It's <laughs> it, it's the most offensive, disgusting, revolting thing that I've ever heard of. And this is a wow. it, and, bless bless and, Jesus, bless and, Jesus. <laughs> and and like Rana's saying, it's uh, they want to add it to the platform. I mean, it's, this isn't like so. Then it's not some like fringe view. This they, is the view. They hook yeah. they hook hook that up to your testicles. Basically, you'll be in a room. You'll be hooked up um, electroshock therapy to your testicles, and you'll be shown. Um, pornographic images um, uh, of gay nature, right? right? And that um, sound was Alex's jaw hitting the floor. No, that, 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 <laughs> and then you'll be shocked. That, 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 that sound was me, you know, thinking about a clockwork orange and mm -hmm. remembering exactly how, how goes, effective that was. You know, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what goes through my head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, peel back eyelids. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like oh my god. So yeah, uh, so the the actual convention though. Um, any other thoughts on that? You're, I think you're going oh, to the, the yeah no the, the crime yeah well. I mean, fear has always been a solid motivator for 
for Republicans. And you know, you know, I kept on thinking about my my grandparents who were, were staunch Republicans living in California. And um, I remember um, just you, you know seeing a lot of the um, the mail pieces that they would receive from um, um, right wing groups. It was all you know you know they're coming after your parks they they you know, the united nations is going to declare sovereignty over your you know your you know your house or, or or whatever like like fear has always been like a very solid motivator um on the right and um i th- i think that's what we're seeing so all of those issues though, are these like nebulous fuzzy things like yeah. there could be some validity to it what what they're talking about now yeah. is just wrong Crime yeah. is down every yeah. year. So they're year literally not accurate when they're talking. No, speaking. well, I mean, that's, that's always been the case. Well, I mean, I don't know about always, but in, in recent memory, that's been the case with the Republican Party is that they, they, I mean, you know, it's become a well-worn adage at this point that reality has a liberal bias. Well, and we <laughs> asked our guest, um, Frank Lassay, who's running for Congress for Wisconsin, mm-hmm. God help us. We asked him about fact-checking him on something. I think he actually had something, said something to the degree about colored people in births and it was just really offensive and horrible. And we said, we well, should fact check you. And he said, you know, I don't have time for research. Huh. You know why? Because he knows that people that look to him. Yeah. Okay. Aren't uh, gonna I, do it and, either. and I, I think, I think you projected some of that. Uh, I think what he was saying is that there is violence on inner cities like in Chicago. And I mean, there's truth there. from colored people. I don't think, I don't think he said that. You did. I, I yes, he did. I, okay. Yes, he did. He said it. He said it. I think I listened to the first fifteen minutes of, of that. I must have missed it. Okay, mm-hmm. we'll see. Yeah, we all yeah. have to re-listen. No, it wasn't until after the fifth, first fifteen oh, minutes. Right. I remember exactly where it was. And then, okay, so the other piece of that is then Republicans, and it sounds like I'm piling on Republicans, but that's because this is their platform right now. I'll pile on. And well, I and I'm not because yeah. I I agree with them on some things, right? But. They, they they are getting down on the, the Democratic convention because they keep saying they're not mentioning ISIS. And if you look at the threats in this country, you should be more afraid of your bathtub than ISIS. Right. And they're not talking about bathtubs either. Yeah. So I, I just, I, I'm so confused about, <laughs> I'm confused about both parties, actually. <laughs> Wait, well, what I, do you mean? We should be talking about, we should be talking more about ISIS? No, we shouldn't be. Right. And the Re- Republicans are saying we should be. So, I mean, so there are two, like, they're two of their core issues, ISIS and violence increasing, which they're tying. Well, because they don't racism. want to talk about how hateful they are right. with women, children, gay, lesbian, transgender. They don't want to talk about that. They want to talk about something that scares the living shit out of people, which is obviously ISIS. So they don't really want to talk about what you're actually affected by and handling every day well, in our own country, you know, I think the, the the core Republican thing at this point is, you know, in in there's if there's a crisis, there's an opportunity, right? So the, if there isn't actually a crisis about, us, they need to project one or create so, one. So so I think honestly, as somebody who I feel like I have a toe in both communities, okay. I feel like you're projecting a democratic worldview onto what they're doing. They they don't put that much thought into it. It's all about fear, and some of them they have that fear. They're not thinking about it. They're not like, how can we use this as a as a thing? They're most some of them are, but not really. Uh, they 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 feel it. It's emotional. I mean, you, you, you could be right, but I've always had this idea that somewhere there's like a room of people plotting this out. No, I see. I, 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 like, I, I, I we'll think tell I, them this, and we'll make them scared of that. Of course, there's a room with people plotting that out, and it's a very expensive room, yeah. and it's happening every day. Sure, you know. So, I, I so think, Ryan's Priebus, maybe, and and like, maybe, like maybe Paul Ryan, there, but there, not there, Trump. There's a kernel in there someplace <laughs> where there are people who actually, you know, yeah. are in touch with reality. Um. Well, those are two different things. The, the plotting and the reality are two different <laughs> things. <laughs> Uh, any, what else you got? Anything else on those, on the conventions, anything uh, on the, convention? the election? Yeah. Um, I, I just, um, I, I really hope that I'm all for democratic party unity and, um, stronger together for sure. And so what's your take on the whole Bernie thing and Hillary thing? Anything about that? Well, I'll, I'll say this. Um, okay. So the, the, I voted for president in 1992. That was the first time I voted. That was for Bill Clinton. By 1994, I was completely disillusioned by the democratic party. Um, by Clinton, by Clinton, right? <laughs> and I, um, you know, voted green for at least ten years. Um, sort of came back into the fold with Kerry, right? And <laughs> so, the 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 current Democratic Party platform that we see today is 
something I would have dreamed of at any point during those, you know, 10 years in the wilderness. Or While you were voting green. Yeah, you know, and that platform is the enduring legacy of um, Bernie Sanders and, and the movement that he created. Um, so I, I think, you know, he, he didn't win the nomination, but he has changed the conversation and he has changed it for the better, in my opinion. And I, I strongly believe that like anyone who's been involved with Bernie Sanders can sit back and say, look, we, we, we have a substantial victory on our hands. And um, our job now really needs to be to um, make sure that there are people in a position to put this platform into place and to protect it and to um, keep Hillary Clinton you know, honest and hold her feet to the fire. And, and not let Trump appoint Supreme Court justices. Well, well, th that has got to be the most important thing. I mean, I, I just, I, I don't see any potential, possible argument that you can make that, you know, Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are even remotely similar. Um, oh, you're going to drop that kind of bomb on me with no mi no minutes left on the clock? <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, so I, briefly, okay, the, I, I look at money as being uh, how you judge priorities. And that's not the only way, but it's a pretty big metric. Our biggest budget items are Social Security, Medicare. They're the same. Military, they're the same. Now, how they want to spend the money, yeah, maybe we want to put troops here, put troops there. The money is all the same, and they're very, very similar. Uh, there's almost Except no one candidate that. actually completely went, um, you know, balls in and, and, and sued people for a living. That's how he, that's how he works with money. He just sues you. That's um, what he does. Okay. But his policies that he's putting forward, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, if you can decipher it, which I admit is difficult really for both of them, um, that two thirds to three quarters of what they're talking about is identical. She's not going to cut the military. She hasn't committed to that at all. She's not going to reform social security, and Medicare. She hasn't had, there's no, no good proposal on the table from either of them. And those, uh, those are huge, huge, huge things. And we're overspending, we're spending more than we're taking in. And there's, you know, debate as to how bad of a thing is that really. But, but we probably, if we don't have a really good reason. Uh, we I'm, probably I'm not shouldn't. sure that's the case though, because I mean, I've heard a conversation beginning with the Obama administration that the conversation is now is about expanding social security, um, making it pay more. Um, you know, increasing the amount of um, the income that, you know, it's taxed on so that it can be more sustainable. But Obama's, and, not, so, Clinton. Obama's not Clinton. Though. No, but I mean, I, 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 you know, I think that's becoming more, a, more of a general conversation about Social Security because... Um, oh, no, they try to avoid those things like the plague because they, they're all courting the people that are older than us to vote. No, but, but I think it's shifting, though. I mean, like, like the conversation... You know, ten years ago was all about you know like how do we make this sustainable? How do we wean people? So off before right? we went on air, you said that you hope that Obama's not our last Gen X president, and I think that that's he he's with us on that. I think. Yeah. I don't think these other two are. They're they're with them. <laughs> <laughs> so I I think that there is more similarity than differences. Yeah. Uh, from a human rights standpoint, uh, the 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 Supreme Court they don't really judge on business issues very often, which is where I would tend to agree more with Republicans. Uh, I would almost prefer that there is a Democrat on the on the Supreme Court. So Tr Donald Trump basically said he's quoted as saying that he's going to appoint someone on the Supreme Court to take care of um, the woman's right to choose. He said that. that. It's not going to happen. But okay. but they, okay, but he said it, so it's like it is there. Well, okay, but the, that 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 same like this fringe idea that's not even really going to happen. It's the same thing with the uh, Hillary Clinton versus Bernie Sanders thing. You're like, you, at some point, you have to be like, okay, live in the real world. Well, I, not I, I think his, his, he chose that 40 years ago. I, I think his choice of Mike Pence really kind of yeah. I think he a, a he, lot about, he sealed he, they, the deal with that one. I, I don't I don't think Trump really cares. Pence doesn't get a about, vote about about a, abortion or women's rights no. or, or or really uh, much of anything. I mean. I think he does. I think he's trying to play, you know, straddle that a little bit. He's not going to come out really strongly one way or the other. But he, if he mentions, which is that, exactly why Hillary Clinton is your candidate because she has come out strongly in support. But that's not of an issue. Rights. We're not going to get rid of abortion. No, we it's just, not going to happen. I, 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 think, in I feel like voting for that is sort of misguided because then you're leaving a whole bunch of other issues that are boy i'm not saying vote for trump i'm saying vote for neither it's already <laughs> happening though but it's all it, it's not an illusion it's already happening yeah uh, what at the state level for sure what what is women's uh, the ability to get an abortion in wisconsin has been taken 
and shrunk like big time. Right okay, now. but Hillary Clinton is not in Wisconsin. She doesn't control that. Exactly, so, but if you go to the federal level and you start, I'm not saying don't ever vote there. Democrat. I'm saying these two are very similar. Full stop. I'm not saying the Republican platform and Democrat platform are identical. I'm saying these two on women's rights, they're completely opposite. On a federal ish, on a fed, federal standpoint, there's it doesn't matter. It and does though. Already you, done. It does when you're asking for federal yeah. money for Planned Parenthood. It does matter. No, I mean, we're, well, we're it, we're one vote away. In, well, in funding court. Planned Parenthood is a separate issue than women's rights to choose. I'm just saying like you need to be careful, and I I would not drive to the polls with TPP flags <laughs> waving, right? And oh, that's uh, the reason why you show up because you're so upset that yeah. TPP is on the platform and you're a woman and you're 22 years old and you don't even realize how much you need to have access to healthcare. Okay, uh, we got 10 seconds. TPP, what is it? Trans-Pacific Partnership. Okay, everybody Google that and we'll talk about that next time. Ah, yeah. Yeah, so... Uh, Thanks for being here, Alex. Oh, no problem. We're all done. I told you it would go fast. This is episode number 26. I had to check my notes because we're going through these so fast. I lose track. Hmm. It's bananas. Uh, and uh, we're going to have video coming soon, so that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, if, I, if I can end with one thing, I would for sure. declare a moratorium on the use of the word bananas. <laughs> you know, I, I, and, and also bonkers. Like, but, like, 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 like two, those are two words. But you know what? You, you know that my tendency would be to place an expletive in there. So. Oh, right. <laughs> so I'm I'm tr- I'm trying. Yeah. This is, that's me trying. You know, t- taking out the f bombs and replacing them with bananas. That's <laughs> that, that's me. That's me moving forward. <laughs> I guess that's progress of a country. yeah. So uh, Alex, uh, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, how would they do that? Oh, um, my email is um, alex at kavarna k a v a r n a dot com. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure why. They would want to get a hold of if they want to tell you how stupid you are. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, democratic elections in Coney. Yeah, no, no, I'm I'm, I'm happy to talk to anyone about anything. You have Twitter and Facebook as well, right? Oh, Twitter. I am um, at Alex Mogens on Twitter. That's my middle name, M O G E N S. Um, Alex Galt was already taken. Um, Hmm. and then I'm on Facebook also. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Thank you for coming on. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, again, for show notes, politicalradar.com slash 26. If you are interested in sponsoring, shoot an email to contact at politicalradar.com. Join the Political Radar community on Facebook, and we'll talk to you next time. If you enjoyed this episode of Political Radar, please share it with your friends on Facebook and Twitter. Even better, submit a show review to iTunes or Stitcher. To listen to other episodes of Political Radar, please visit politicalradar.com slash episodes. To support our podcast, please visit our sponsors who make this show possible. You can do this by visiting politicalradar.com slash sponsors. Thanks for listening to Political Radar. To ensure that you never miss an episode, subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. To stay up to date, visit politicalradar.com or connect with us on Facebook or Twitter. We want to thank our sponsor, ReleaseWire, for making the show possible. Visit them at releasewire.com slash politicalradar.